Hello lovely people, welcome to another book chat, the regular wrap up of stuff I've read at some point in my past. I've got four books to talk about this week, let's crack on. Sophie vlogs. First up is Murder Most Unladylike by Robin Stevens. This is a middle grade murder mystery. It is set in an English boarding school. We follow Hazel and Daisy who have set up sort of their own little um, like mystery investigation comp group type thing. One day Hazel stumbles upon the dead body of one of their school mistresses. She runs to get her friend but when they return the body is gone. So they set out to discover who killed this teacher, what is going on. I had a really fun time reading this. I sped through it. I will definitely be continuing with the series. There were a lot of things I liked about it. There were also some niggles that I had. So, um, there's very much like a Sherlock and Watson dynamic going on here. Um, in that Hazel, who is our main narrator, who is writing all of this down as like case notes, is our Watson figure and Daisy is our Sherlock figure. For most of the book that was really fun. Occasionally I didn't love the way that Daisy treated Hazel. Sometimes their friendship felt a little bit uneven. Hazel's from Hong Kong and at times there's very much like a feeling of being like a slight outsider as a result of that. You know, she grew up reading these um, tales of English boarding schools so she had this idea, just knocked my glasses off my face, yes. <laughs> But she had this idea of what an English boarding school is like versus what the reality of it actually is. And the reality of it does have like a little bit of racism, stuff like that. But sometimes I wish that that was sort of focused on a little bit more. I read a really interesting article on Vice recently. If I can find it, I'll link it down below. Um, and the author was talking about how um, these sort of like um, English boarding school stories that she loved growing up really are like this vehicle of colonialism and stuff like that and I felt like sometimes this was kind of looking like it was sort of being like oh hey this but then it, I, I didn't really feel like it's super committed fully to that you know um, and tying into that is this friendship between like Hazel and Daisy because um, Daisy is like the Sherlock Holmes figure and there were just a few moments of things, like there's a moment which is, is posited as like them having this argument where they both apologise. And I was like, I actually don't think Hazel needs to apologise for this. So sometimes I didn't love the way that Daisy treated Hazel because I questioned like, are you, do you view this person as a friend or are they just like someone that you use to solve mysteries, you know? I have heard from other reviews that I read that also felt the same. I've heard that it gets better from the second book onwards. So I will be continuing with this because um, my library app has the rest of the series and I definitely liked it enough to continue reading it. It's just those were my main niggles at the end. On the actual um, mystery front, I really enjoyed the unfolding of it. It was really funny to kind of have this like um, Sherlock and Watson style thing, but it is all confined to a boarding school and like their time is fairly mapped out so like how do you go about like having your secret meetings like you kind of just have to like hide in the airing cupboard and stuff like that so there was a lot about this that i really enjoyed that i thought was really lovely and i definitely will continue the series i just had those slight niggles that stopped me from rating it higher i also read two novels in verse very different styles one very contemporary one not contemporary at all so on my Kindle, I read Aguine Anguine, which I really hope I pronounced correctly because I YouTubed it and everything, um, which is by Pushkin, which is a very famous Russian novel. I've always meant to read some Pushkin because I know how renowned he is. This follows Anguine essentially like he becomes friends with this guy called Lensky. Um, Lensky falls for this girl. Um, this other girl, Tatiana, like proclaims her love for Anguine, but he like rejects her. Like it's very much like that sort of a style. Um, I had an interesting reading experience with this, so it's told in verse, and I'm very aware that in the original Russian, um, one of the things that made this really so groundbreaking and stuff is that Pushkin invented this sort of rhyme scheme whereby um, different lines always rhyme, but um, different lines always end on either like a masculine word or a feminine word, and that's one of the real like things that it is famous for, which was interesting. Reading it in translation obviously poses an interesting question there because, you know, um, English language does not have masculine and feminine, so um, the translation I read is not the one that everyone says is the best translation. There is this one translation that everyone um, says is the top, top translation. That's not the one I read. I didn't know about it until afterwards. 
Um, what my translation was from Project Gutenberg, and it was, I did really appreciate the fact that it had a lot of notes throughout it. So where there are um, lines and stuff that uh, are references to things that if you existed in Russian court at this time, you would automatically know what he was referencing. There was a lot of explanatory notes and stuff like that, which I did really appreciate. I also listened to an On Our Time um, podcast episode, which is all about this as well, which gave me a lot of really interesting context for, again, why it's so important, why it's influential, and super appreciate that as well, because I definitely think those enhanced my reading experience and it gave me like an awareness of, of things that were important to know, stuff like this. Very much one of those where I'm like glad to have read it and to ha understand why it's so influential. Not my favourite thing to read personally, but like had a fun time. The other novel in birth I read, I read on Libby on my phone and that is Punching the Air by E.B. Zubwai and Youssef Salam. This tells the story of Amal, who is a black Muslim boy in America and he is wrongfully imprisoned for a crime that he didn't commit. The two writers, E.B. is um, a YA writer, Yusuf is um, someone who himself was wrongfully imprisoned for a crime that he didn't commit, so um, they collaborated on this to sort of um, portray what exactly that experience is like. First of all, I thought that this was so effectively done. I the, this type of novel in verse is very different from obviously the previous one because the previous one has this rhyme scheme and all of the um, verses are like the same length, they have the same rhyme scheme every time and stuff like that, so that is a feat to have created. This is very different insofar as it's a bit more like free verse and it's, the poems will vary in length and that sort of stuff and I found that really effective because it was a really great um, narrative storytelling method to sort of like show you where Amal is at. It takes you through from like the time in the court to his time in prison and it has this ending which I really um, I thought was so effective. Um, Amal's name means hope and there is this this uh, sense of hope throughout especially at the ending but also there's an uncertainty to the ending. Things aren't fully resolved. There is hope on the horizon but um, I felt like this worked really well to sort of be, although we are telling the story of this individual, because you don't have a set answer to how it's going to conclude, it sort of really makes it this more universal thing where it's like, here's one option of how things could go, but also this might happen too. And all throughout this, it's really looking at like the prison industrial complex and it's pointing out that like Amal is has been convicted of something he didn't do but equally like other people in the prison have also been exploited in their own ways they're there because of um, different disadvantages and stuff like this or like um, the way that the world has disadvantaged them and, and this sort of thing like the regrets that they have but also like the ways that they've been unfairly treated I felt like it was just a really effective way of sort of like taking you on an individual story but shining a light on wider issues that are far more universal that you could apply to like real world interactions and stuff like this. Um, Amal is, um, he's a poet, he is a rapper, he is an artist and the, um, the, the role that those things have in sort of keeping him going during this situation I also really enjoy. I don't know, I just think it was really masterfully done. I gave it five stars, I don't see how it could have done what it was doing any better than it did, personally, and I definitely recommend giving it a read. Um, the final book I want to talk about I also read on Libby. <laughs> um, this is Being Human by Judith Human. Judith Human is a disability rights activist in America. It's a very short read, it's her autobiography. I thought she did a really good job of um, taking you through very clearly like key moments in her life leading up to um, her activism work. Events that she covers in here include um, her, she sued because she had been denied a teaching license just because she was disabled. Um, she organised a sit-in to um, ensure that this really important piece of legislation that was just being bandied around and no one was taking it and um, delivering it like they should have. Um, they brought a lot of attention to that with their sit-in. She's worked in government organisations to help progress rights for disabled people, stuff like this. I just, I gave this one five stars as well because I couldn't, I didn't see what else I could want from this narrative. I felt like the narrative was very clear and it was really, um, especially because I'm reading this as like a British reader and that sort of thing, so I don't always understand like the processes in America and the legislation and that sort of stuff. It's not something that I really know or understand because I don't know that much about American history. <laughs> 
Um, so I felt like she really like made it really clear like like what the sit-in was about, what the legislation was about, what the issues were, why they did the sit-in, how the sit-in went, um, repercussions, stuff like this. You know, I think it's something we need to acknowledge when we talk about um, equality and equal rights and stuff like this is a lot of disabled people still don't have equal rights. I think that there is a world of disability activism that I am aware of, that I need to educate myself on further. And this book was a really interesting step along that journey. I would definitely be interested in getting a better understanding of um, legislation in the UK so that I just understand it better and can do more and that sort of thing. So um, definitely another book that I would highly, highly recommend. Um, that's everything I wanted to talk about this week. I hope you're having a really lovely day. I'll see you next time for something.